there! You are now watching Online Robotics with RoboCamp and the topic of today's lesson is Robotic Helicopter. We are about to embark on the stage 4 out of 4 stages of this lesson. This means that we have already discovered the context surrounding this project, we have used step-by-step -step building instructions to create a cool robot like this one from LEGO WeDo 2.0 kit, and we have also already learned more about this construction, how is it going to work and which elements we can use right now in programming. If you are a student, for this lesson you will need two things. First of all, of course, you will need your robotic helicopter model with charged batteries inside your smart hub. Without them, nothing will work. So if you don't have this robot yet, please go to the stage two of this lesson where we build this robot step by step. The second thing you will need is a programming app. Today we are using LEGO WeDo 2.0 software, which is free to download and install. You can use it to program on your computer, on your PC, on your laptop. As you can see today, I am using actually a tablet, which is also an option. Okay, so you can use it too. <laughs> now, if you are a teacher, Hello there, it's nice to see you. Remember that all the instructions you can see behind me, you can use with your students too. Now, I hope that in a moment you will see how fun and educational programming robots is. So stay with us. And if you would like to learn more about uh, our products and services, please open the, the description of this video below and click the link. Okay, now guys, if you are ready, this means that we can start programming this robotic helicopter model. As you already know, in this helicopter model designed by RoboCamp team, we have tilt sensor and motor. Now, in this program, we want to make use of both of them. So the idea for today's program is as follows. We want the helicopter to activate both of its rotors whenever it's, whenever it's not on the ground. And well, we can easily detect when it is on the ground because then the sensor installed right here underneath the smart hub is in horizontal position. So, we want to create the program that will activate the motor whenever the sensor is tilted in any direction, thus saying that the helicopter is flying. <laughs> okay, so how do we create a program like that? First, we need to begin with some sort of start block. Now, start blocks actually help us activate all blocks, so blocks that create together a script, so a sequence of blocks. And for this program we're going to use start block, okay? It's the yellow one you can see behind me in the instructions. Let's find it together on our blocks palette and move it to the programming area. It's among the yellow blocks and I'm gonna drag and drop it right here. Okay, so now that we know that the script will begin when we want it to, um, well, what should happen first? How do you think? Should the motor be activated right away? Not really. We don't want, if we were to activate the motor immediately, it would start, well, when the helicopter is on the ground. And we don't want that. We want the motor to start only when the sensor is tilted. This means that the program should wait. It should wait until the sensor is tilted in any direction. And we can do this, we can create this condition of sorts by using wait for block with any tilt 
input. Now first let's find the weight for black. It's the yellow one you can see with this weight icon. It's also among the yellow blocks. Now when you are adding a new block to the program, make sure it is connected to the previous one because it's only this way we will create a, a script, a sequence. Because if I were to place it well, let's say somewhere close to the start block, but it is not connected. Well, this block will not be executed when I click on the start block. So let's make sure this block is connected. Now, as you can see by default, uh, the input here is actually a number uh, because usually this block uh, can make this program wait for a selected number of seconds. But that's not what we want for this program. So instead, let's find the tilt sensor input. It should be right here at the end of the block's palette. We have two uh, sensor inputs to choose from. And if you're not sure which one is the tilt sensor, well, look for the arrows on its sides. Now let's move it, let's add it right underneath wait for block instead of the numerical input. By default, it's, it's in the mode that we want it to be. It's in the any tilt uh, input mode. Now, if by accident you changed it, don't worry. You can change it back by clicking. Mm -hmm. Like so, as you can see, this input has several positions and finally you will get back to the any tilt input. Okay, so what should happen now? The next block we want to add is one of the motor blocks. So of course it will help us control the motor, but this one is actually motor power block. Because early on we want to establish with how much power this block will rotate. Now, if you have seen the part one of this lesson, you know that helicopters need a lot of power to start their rotors. So we want to make it visible in our construction as well. So let's find the motor power block. It's green block and it's at the very beginning of my palette. Okay, by default it's 8. I'm going to leave it as it is. And if you would like to experiment with this block, you should know that it takes values from 0 to 10, where 10, of course, is maximum and 0, 0 does not move at all. Okay, so we have already uh, decided on the power of our motor, but aren't we forgetting something? There is one more thing we need to decide when it comes to the power of our motor, and that is the direction in which it should rotate. You see, Lego motor right here can rotate in two directions. And we want the, this time, well, to rotate clockwise. So let's find motor that way block and add it to our program. All right, everyone. We still have several blocks to add before we complete this program, but already at this stage, we should test it. We should test whether we created this construction, well, correctly, and whether all the sensors and motors are working. Because of that, right now we need to stop programming and connect our construction to the software and see how this program works in practice. To connect our construction, first we need to open Bluetooth tab in the app. It's right here. The next thing we need to do is to activate the Smart Hub. We can do it very easily just by pressing this green button right here until this diode starts flashing. Once it is detected, let's select it from the list 
and wait until this connected. Once you see thumbs up, it means that the connection is established and we can go back to the programming area. Now, well, all that is left to do is to press start. But before we press that start, let's see if we understand what exactly should happen well, once the program is activated. Let's go block by block. As soon as I press start, the program should wait for the sensor to be tilted in any direction. Once this condition is met, the, the power of my motor will be set to 80% and it will start rotating clockwise. Let's see if that's indeed how our program works. I have already pressed the start and now you can see that well, it's waiting. So basically I need to use my hands and move the robot. Okay, as you can see it works. This is always a good sign. Um, but what happens when I put it back on the ground? It keeps on working, it keeps on flying, but it's really counterintuitive. I don't want it to keep on working anymore. So to stop this program, I need to press this button you can see in the bottom right of my screen. Okay, now it has stopped working. And I know now that, well, not only the program is working as I intended, but also that uh, all the gears are connected um, correctly and I don't need to, well, improve my construction in any way. This means that I can go back uh, to the programming instructions and continue expanding this program. This version of program for robotic helicopter starts the motor uh, whenever my helicopter is off the ground, uh, which well actually means that whenever the tilt sensor is tilted in any direction. But I also want my robot to stop the motor when it's back on the ground. So how do I make it happen? Well, First, I need to create another condition. A condition that says now the tilt sensor is not tilted at all. For that, I will need another wait for block with the tilt sensor input. Let's place them in our programs. Okay, once again, I don't need numerical input. I'm going to switch this input for the tilt sensor input right here. By default, it has the any tilt mode uh, right now, but I don't want this one. I want to change it to no tilt at all, making sure that, well, it is in a horizontal position. <laughs> okay, so do you remember how to change it? All I need to do is basically click through the settings. As you can see here by using these blocks we can actually make the uh, sensor be tilted in a more exact position to the right, to the left, back, front. Okay, so make sure to experiment with that once we're done. And okay, now my condition is complete. So. The next question is, well, what should happen once this condition is fulfilled, once the tilt sensor is back in no tilt position? Of course, the motor should stop. So let's find the motor off block at the beginning in the motor blocks and add it to our block sequence. Okay, so let's look at this program right now. It should do everything I want it to, right? After, after all, what I wanted to happen is to uh, motor to be activated once I take my helicopter off the ground and then stop it once it's back on the ground. That's great, right? Um, almost. You see, if we were to leave this program 
like so. I could, well, lift the helicopter up and put it down only once. After all, uh, afterwards, even if I were to pick the helicopter up again, I would have to start this entire program anew, which is, well, not the most convenient way, I'd say. So instead of doing that, we can use another block. To make sure that the program is repeated many, many times over, we can use the repeat block, which is actually a programming loop. Let's find it among the yellow blocks. It's one with this peculiar shape. Okay, now let's drag it to the programming area and observe what happens. As soon as I place it above uh, my script, it wants to be wrapped around all blocks in my program. That's great, that's what I wanted to do. So I'm going to drop it here. Okay, so this version of the program should allow us to execute this forever, actually, until we stop the program. Now, let's test this version with our construction. Congratulations, everyone! This is the final version of program for the robotic helicopter by Robocamp. Now, our smart hubs are already connected, so let's test how it works. Nothing happens yet, but if I pick up my model, Let me switch to a close-up view so that you can see it better, what happens with my construction. As you can see, even when the model is not directly on the ground, but it is in horizontal position, well, the motor stops working. Well, it actually deactivates, it doesn't stop working at all. Okay, so this is great. This is exactly how I wanted this program to work. Check if your program, if your robot behaves exactly as mine does. it does, congratulations, you've done a great job! You've done an amazing job at learning, building and programming on the lesson today, which means it's time to reveal the hidden fifth stage of every robotics lesson with RoboCamp. Now guys, it's time for you to celebrate. Experiment with this construction, have fun with your robot, Perhaps you would like to add some changes to the construction of it. Or maybe you would like to create another program that maybe instead of stopping the motor completely, just slows it down a bit. It's up to you now. Now, if you enjoyed this lesson, let us know by giving us a thumbs up. It's always good to know if uh, you enjoy this sort of content. And if you would like to organize your own lesson and don't know where to start, contact us, we'll be happy to help you. Thank you once again, guys, and have a great day. Bye!